Alright, welcome back to a new episode of the Rogue Moon Podcast. I think we're on 6 now. Uh, uh let me last check. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Last week, we, uh, didn't make it. Uh, I was fucking sick. And I just, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't even feel like doing it. I left work early, I took off the next day. Called me a pussy. I wasn't doing it. <laughs> I mean, my whole job is te- talking to people. And I didn't even want to do that shit. So that's fair. We didn't do that. I was sick. I didn't feel like it. Uh, so we're back this week. Uh, you know, last week it finally wasn't technical difficulties. <laughs> like, you know, I think we should be on like eight now. Yeah, we should. If we if we didn't skip any weeks, we'd be on like eight or nine right now. No, like we didn't. The only weeks that we like skipped was like. Okay, so there is. We recorded two episodes, technical issues with both. Uh, then you were asleep that night, and then I was sick. So I think we should be on like 10. Yeah, that sounds about right. So, yeah. I, like, we recorded like two different episodes, and I think like some technical went wrong, and so. That sounds about I, right. <laughs> like one time I think my audio or both of our audios didn't record and then I think yours didn't yeah mine did whatever we back at it this week uh, there ain't much really uh, yeah I you know normally I come up with the topic but I didn't really think of one so we just uh, uh, this week I'm gonna talk about Blue Beetle cause I've seen that twice now you saw it twice? Uh, yeah, I saw it with my buddy, and, and then my dad wanted to see it, and I was like, okay. Um, and then we're going to talk about the writer strike. Apparently, it's heading for gaming. Yay. And Moon has played some Starfield, so he's going to get first impressions. I have not touched it yet. Uh, and then uh, there's also Call of Duty Trash Talk Ban. That we're going to talk about and then maybe a few other things because i'm sure we'll get off talk about talking about one thing and then go into another but i mean if it's cool with you i also <laughs> like to talk a little bit more about mortal kombat one since it's gearing up hey, to release next week yeah so i guess i don't know i'll start with blue beetle i ain't really got much to say honestly um it was good don't get me wrong but it is the most generic superhero movie yeah i have it's like beat for beat, like the story plot. Okay, so there's like two villains in it. There's like I guess the brains of the operation, and then the the fucking uh, like body, you know, like the muscle. Yeah. So like, uh, fuck, I forgot her. I already forgot her name. But the the villains are whatever uh like the brains or whatever is like uh ted cord's sister um she runs the company and she's trying to build something called the omac which is like the um oh my god the scarab which is you know what blue beetle uses it's like that but it's like for military use and the bot the body of the operation his name's like care pack or like care package you know um his fucking basically he uh he was the test subject essentially you know he's 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 number one he was number one but anyways uh she runs uh the company after ted cord disappears uh there's a lot of references ted ted cord and only like two to daniel garrett which if you don't know who that is um ted cord was the first blue beetle um Jamie Ryze, uh is, you know, actually has the scarab and has the full suit, while uh, Ted Gore, uh, Ted Cord, you know, built his own suit and like his own tech and shit. He's kind of like Batman almost, you know. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah, and so he's referenced like heavy in this movie. And then Daniel Garrett's like the dude that took up the mantle after Ted. And then before uh, Hami, 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 fuck, I can't say it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it like it was good. Don't get me wrong, I loved Sholo Miranda. Uh, he did really good. Um, 
but it's it's generic as fuck. Like the body of the operation basically becomes like, you know, Blue Beetle. You know, it's it's one of those generic where like the villain has the same powers as the hero, um, and the dude also the suit looks like the robots out of Pacific Rim for some fucking reason. Uh, the comedy actually wasn't like too heavy in this movie, which was pretty nice for a fucking change in a superhero movie. Obviously, the comedic relief was fucking. It was George Lopez. Let's be real. I mean, that's we, all knew, we all knew he was coming. I, like the serious moments did actually pretty good uh, for what they were. Um, I actually like. I was like, okay, these are like actual. <clears throat> good serious moments although again story story is generic as fuck basically person gets powers didn't want them and then learns to accept them and become the hero he needs to be is destined to be generic as fuck um villain has the same powers um yeah i mean don't get me wrong i enjoyed it but it doesn't really bring anything special to the table um I, I mean, I have read, if you are Hispanic, you'll enjoy it a lot more because there's a lot of references to that culture, which I, I, I could see because I could, you know, like, they were pretty obvious with the references, a little subtle, and, you know, I could tell, like, I don't get that, but I understand that's definitely a reference to something uh, that other people enjoy and, like, you know, obviously is part of that culture, but I didn't understand it. But, I, I mean, it's more enjoyable for those people because, you know, that's who it's for. That's what the superhero is, you know? He's that Hispanic representation. Represent. Um, but, yeah, I, I, you know, they tease a second one, kind of, I guess. I don't know. I, can, I mean, like, it's a teaser for, like, future Blue Beetle content, but, like, uh, I don't know. But it's... It's still good, you know, it's like generic as fuck, it's not like, the jokes aren't really cringy, you know, George Lopez does his George Lopez thing, you know, if you don't like George Lopez, don't think he's funny, you're not, you're obviously gonna think the comedy's dog shit, but I love George Lopez, so I thought it was funny, um, I don't know, it was pretty good, I liked it. Do you think it's and a plus, good start to James, uh, James Gunn's DC well, world? I mean, I mean, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this the only thing this movie really builds up is more Blue Beetle content. Which I can't say without spoilers, but it's just like that's all this really does. This doesn't like... like I'm sure in the Super, Superman movie like it sets up more because there's confirmed like Green Lantern, Hawk, uh, Hawkeye, and, or Mr. Terrific. I don't know. You know, like there's other heroes confirmed. So like... It, the super Superman movie is going to be more of a start. It's going to have more of like this branching off here, this branching off there. While this was just Blue Beetle, like this, what this set up and is for is for Blue Beetle two, or if they make a TV show or whatever the fuck they end up doing with Blue Beetle. Like this doesn't really set up for anything in the universe. Like it doesn't tease like if the next main villain was like if like you know how like there's Thanos like if the next big thing they do is Crisis on Infinite Earths like if that's what they do live action like if that's the storyline they do then like they don't you know slowly tease it like it's it's gonna start in Superman and then progress gotcha. um I was I, it's not I mean I it I heard he also had no involvement with this film because, uh, like, when he became, like, a part of it, it was kind of, like, already toward the end of production. Um, so I don't know if he had any involvement with this, but it was still pretty good regardless. So, I don't know. I think the second one's going to be pretty interesting because uh, it does, I think it also helps sets up Booster Gold in a way because uh, Booster Gold is tied to like you know ted cords blue beetle and everything so it does kind of set up booster gold in a way so i'm excited to see who they get for booster gold there's a lot of talk of it being chris pratt 
I'm like, eh, I just like, I know a lot of, you know, he's going to get a, lot, a bunch of his friends. Like, he's got Nathan Fillion as Sky Gardner, which is pretty good. You know, he's voiced Green Lantern for a while in, like, the animated shit. So, that's a decent casting. But I don't want him just casting these motherfuckers just because, you know. Buddies. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm okay with them being in this movie and having a part. But, like, don't just, like, cast them because it's, like, all okay. Like, you know, obviously Drax is going to come over. Like, have that motherfucker be Bane or Lobo or some shit. Don't just have him be, like, fucking alternate universe Superman or some shit. Like, have him be, like, you know, a character that suits him. Like, don't just cast motherfuckers. And, I mean, he at least seems to, you know, if he's casting his friends, you know, he's putting them in perspective spots, like... Nathan Fillion as Guy Gardner is pretty good casting. I, I mean, sucks that the first live-action Green Lantern we get since Ryan Reynolds' movie is Guy Gardner, but yeah, fuck it. I was really hoping for Jon Stewart, if I'm being honest. I mean, like, I want Jon Stewart as much as the next guy, but, like, honestly, like, it's not Idris Elba. Like, I don't really know who else I'd want to be. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure there's probably someone that I'm just not thinking of, but like, I, it, right now for John Stewart, it's either Idris Elba or I'm not in it for now. Uh, I want Idris Elba as, like that was. I was so disappointed when he was in the Suicide Squad and he was the fucking blood sport. Yeah. I was like, come on. It's like, come on, John Stewart though. He would be perfect. Who cares about okay. blood sport? I don't care if that's like the most basic fan casting. Like it's good for a reason. Like yeah. it's Idris Elba and it's John Stewart. Like, like he's almost like it's like it's you know like with all these like heroes that have different people that take over. Like, it, it, like the debate like Hal Jordan versus fucking John Stewart. It's a pretty good debate, you know. At least, like, with the others, it's like, yeah, I mean, come on. Like, obviously, this one's better, you know? But, like, <coughs> I, I'm like I feel like I feel like John Stewart gives Hal Jordan a run for his money, honestly. Yeah. And, I mean, a lot of that is in part due to, like, you know, the whole animated series and shit. But, I mean, it's kind of like... A, the animated series was go, dude. Yeah. You know, and there's, like, obviously, like, Barry Allen versus Bart. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. But, yeah, I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. I still haven't gotten to see it. Well, we could try and go see it one day. Bet. I'm down. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I think it's gonna... I, you know, I'm excited for Blue Beetle 2. Um, if it gets made. Yeah. Because how well has it been performing in the box office? I don't know how... I don't know if it's been doing super great, but, like, I haven't heard anyone say it's, like, trash. Everyone seems to be fairly enjoy it, you know? I don't think there's, like... Like, besides it being generic as hell, there's not really much to hate about it, honestly. Like, it's pretty enjoyable all around. Like, I didn't... I can't think of a single complaint I honestly have with it. Besides, I mean, yeah, I guess besides the whole fact it's predictable, but, like, at this point, like, every superhero is, like, you know, every superhero movie is following a formula. Like, they're all the same, really. It looks um, like it just broke even three days ago. It looks like the budget was $100 million and it just surpassed $100 million. Yeah, well, I, I mean, Booster Gold supposedly is getting his TV show, so apparently, they're, I guess they're making the TV show before like, the movie and everything, and if that's the case, then, like, you know, Ooh, sorry. whatever ends up, yeah, you better be sorry, but, um, I assume, like, because, you know, they're attached, like, I assume they'll probably just make that, like, season two is, like, Blue Beetle 2, because, I mean, Blue Beetle will do pretty decent, maybe, depending, because, like, a lot of people love Deadpool, and in a way, it's like Deadpool-ish. Like, comedic. And shit. You know, fourth wall, blah, blah, blah. Suck my dock. Yeah. 
I don't know. I, I think it's something that people could enjoy. I mean, a lot of people love the humor with fucking, uh... Swords what's that called? No, 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 no. Uh, like, James Gunn. Like, a, a lot of people love, like, James Gunn's, you know, humor and everything. Um, which, I mean, like, I get it, but... I think some of the jokes when it comes to this and that are just like, eh, whatever. It's kind of trash. Well, I'm glad you like it, because I know you like, you're a big fan of, uh, of Blue Beetle. Yeah, I like Blue Beetle, and I was gonna say, if we, uh, if it was dog shit, then... You'd be we very disappointed. We'd, we'd be having problems easy. There'd, there'd be hands thrown. Uh, I mean, because I was like... I, I understand why they went with Jaime Reyes. I mean, like, it was a pretty obvious choice. Um, especially if they can, like... If they actually decide to keep it going and they end up doing Teen Titans, it's always good to, like, lock down the kids and shit. Because, like, if they did Ted Gord, it's going to be an adult. And there's a picture you see of him, but, like, obviously you don't... It's a painting, and you can't really make out a face. But it looks like the like the face and everything is similar to Jason Sudeikis. So it's possible it could be him. That's Ted Cord, which, I mean, that'd be decent. But who knows? Yeah. Could be good. Could be bad. Who knows? I guess we'll see, you know... It's hard to say how good the future of this is gonna be. I mean, depends how much effort they really want to put into it and where they go with it, honestly. And it kind of sucks that they're trying to reboot their whole cinematic universe during what I would call superhero fatigue. I think a lot of people are just kind of getting tired of superhero movies. They're not performing as well as they used to. Granted, I no. think we have seen a dip in quality. I don't think oh, yeah. the movies are as good, so they're not oh, performing as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, those motherfuckers, they were like, I think after like, like WandaVision and everything, they were like, wait, you're telling me, if we just make this dog shit, like, people are gonna go see this? Uh, like, I don't know, like, I think at a certain point they just finally realized, like, okay, wait, if we just, like, make this, like, not even that good, I, like, people are gonna come, just go see it regardless, so, like. Should I we... feel like they pulled a Star Wars and just didn't plan things out as well as they should have. Oh, no, 100%. Like, I mean, everything was, like, uh, built up for, you know, so long. And then, and like, you know, for Avengers and everything. And then all of a sudden, just they just all went to shit immediately. Yeah. And, like, I mean, they're doing this whole, like, multiverse, this thing, but, like, I mean, where is, like, essentially, like, where is, like, the real crack in the fucking multiverse? Like, is it Loki? Or, like, Mother Watch Season like, 2. Like, the storylines aren't storylining. Like, nothing's fully lining up. Yeah, I feel like nothing's connecting. Which, I mean, I get, I, I'm not saying everything has to connect to everything, but. It just, it, like, everything feels super disjointed, especially, like, there's no, like, common tone, there's no common theme, it's just kind of sporadic, like, everything's kind of doing its own little thing, and I don't think it's, like, very cohesive. Yeah, it's just, like, things are just kind of everywhere, like, Ant-Man just all of a sudden, like, motherfucker was just there, like, there was Kang, and it was, like, apparently a Kang that everyone was, like, all the other Kangs were scared of? Like, I don't know, it's just, none of it's just really lining up yet. I mean, people are like, well, you gotta wait. Like, it, we're already to, like, phase, what are we on? Like, phase fucking five now? I have no idea. Like, they, the whole, like, at, at least by phase, like, into phase one, like, we knew exactly where we're heading. Like, you'd be like, but yeah, they announced Secret Wars. Like, I mean, yeah, but we had, like, a general sense of, like, what the fuck's about to happen. Like, we knew Thanos would be coming for them fucking stones, baby. He wanted there's, them stones. There's a difference between just announcing, hey, this is what we're doing next, versus setting it up in-universe. Like, by the yeah, end of like, Phase 1, Thanos was set up, the Infinity Stones were getting set up, the Jatari were set up. You know, and like, I just feel like none, other than just Kang and the fact that the multiverse exists... 
that's really all the setup they've done for Secret Wars. Yeah, and like, dude, Secret Wars is about to be so dog shit, but it's just gonna be nothing but fan service. It really is. <laughs> it's gonna be just so bad. It's gonna make no sense, but it's just gonna be like, the like, look though, it's. You like I need, that. I need to see Wesley Snipes' blade. I need it. I need it so bad. And Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider. Oh my god, I'd fucking. <laughs> I, 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 I would knowing Nicolas Cage, I feel like he's gonna do it for Deadpool three. Like I feel like he wouldn't do it for like, you know, the regular shit. But like I feel like he, I feel like that motherfucker would be doing it for, uh, fucking what's it called? Brian Reynolds. Yeah. I that man has that. got away with words. That's all I'm yeah. saying. He can have his way with me. For real. For real. But, uh, I'm glad you like Blue Beetle. It looks good. It looks like one of those movies where you can just watch the trailer and you kind of have the entire plot lined out for you. Though, which yeah. is kind of sucks. Yeah. But... yeah, I mean, like, honestly, like, the plot's, like, whatever. I feel like the fight, there's honestly not that much fight scenes, really. Like, okay, so there's, like, Let's see. All right, so there's one, two, and then like technically about like four fights. That doesn't seem like a lot. Yeah. Well, I guess are they are they bigger fight scenes? Because I guess it depends on the scale. Yeah. So there's like two. Of like you know obviously Blue Beetle versus fucking Care Package. I'm, that's what I'm calling them. That's I mean, yeah. Uh, so there's like those two fights. Then there's um, let's see. There's those two fights. There's like a fight where he fights a bunch of soldiers. Another similar scene, but it's not as long. And then like I guess technically a sequence of like the blue beetle ship fighting soldiers so there's not really much like action sequences honestly a lot of it's just kind of like you know talking and shit so it's kind of like it's kind of different for like a superhero movie i guess but i guess it's similar on par for like a superhero like him trying to figure out why is my penis growing what are these hairs doing I don't know. And, Why is uh, my voice getting deeper? Yeah. Uh, I know before the movie came out, I remember reading an interview where they said that the fight scenes were inspired by Injustice 2. Did you see any, like, common, like, moves or, like, abilities I or mean, anything? I like, I think... Like, I don't know. I didn't, like, really see anything that was, like, Injustice-like. I mean, maybe... I just, I don't know, like, watching the fight scenes and everything, I just didn't really see anything that was like, holy shit, that's Injustice. Like, the only time I've seen that is, like, when uh, watching, like, uh... When Black, when uh, Dr. Fate does his wind pose in Black Adam. Well, no, uh, in, like... That shit's solid. Man of, man, yeah, <laughs> but Man of Steel, where, like, they're, like, punching each other and shit. Yeah. So... So that's like pretty much Superman's ultimate in Injustice. Yeah. He just throws you up and then starts hitting you everywhere in the sky. Yeah. God damn. I'm, you know, because I, I know our next topic is going to be Starfield. So I was looking at the recommended. Dude, not even like, I have a pretty decent computer and I don't even have the recommended. I have a I have GeForce. To, I have RTX to write it all at low. 2070 Super. I mean, we'll get, I'll, I'll get into the optimi optimization as part of it, but just let me know when you're ready to move on from Blue Beetle. I don't know if you have anything else to say left. Oh, uh, yeah. There's, yeah, I don't really got much. What would you rate it out of 10? I'd say it's like a solid, like, 7, you know? Like, like above average. I, I get, like, obviously, you know, generic storyline. But, like, compared to, like, other, like, you know, that follow the exact same storyline and everything... I would say I thoroughly enjoyed it compared to those other ones. Oh, I do have a question. Like, those are, like... What? Uh, is the origin, like, his superhero origin in the movie the same as the comics, or is it pretty heavily altered? 
Fuck, I don't know, so I can't remember the comic. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you call yourself yeah, a Blue Beetle fan? Look, I'm tired. I, I can't think it straight. I'm just, th- I, like, I gotta think of the... What, what is this comic? <laughs> <laughs> what is this comic one? Nah, no, you're good. You're, I'm not gonna put you on blast like that. Let, let, let's look it up. Hold on. Let me look it up. I'll help you look for it. Cause I, I'm not a big D- I like I like DC, but if you ask me Marvel or DC, I'm going Marvel every time. You know what I mean? Well, cause like uh, the Ted Korg one, like what background they give is pretty on par for like his storyline. Um, cause you know, again, Ted Korg doesn't have the scares. Like he, he's like Batman. You know. I mean, like, you know, they make the joke in the movie, but, like, I, it's basically true, though. He's, like, he doesn't have the power. It's, like, he, you know, built his own tech and shit. So, Batman's canon in this new DCU. Yeah. Well, he's getting his own movie, and in this movie, he gets Robin. Um, I mean, is the... Uh, I thought the Robert Pattinson Batman movie was separate. I thought it was just its own thing. It wasn't part of any universe or anything. Kind of like how Joker no, no, no. is. No, well, that is separate, but like they're introducing Batman, but he, but it is like uh, it's gonna be an older Batman with a already established Robin. Hmm. Like right. they, that's that's what they announced. Which I'm all for personally, it's just like for me, it's a matter of like, you know, I don't know, a bit of concern of like, is this gonna be like good like i mean like i'm sure it's good but it's just like you already have to establish a batman and then a robin it's like which robin are you going with like are we we getting dick grayson like they haven't said which robin that's what concerns me i I don't give a fuck about damien i do not want damien yeah i don't want damien either damien is a wild or a wild a fucking just a whiny ass brat that's all Damien yeah. is. Like, I, I don't want Damien. Like, I, I genuinely don't. And I could give less of a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I, I genuinely, like... I don't know anyone that likes Damien Wayne. I He's know. just a shit character. I, like, I just, like, I don't know. That's what kind of concerns me. It's like, what, what, are, what are we actually about to do here? Like, are we... Like, what's actually about to happen here? So, I mean, I hope it's good, but I'm I'm a bit concerned. Because it's like, I mean, yeah, obviously, James Gunn knows what he's doing and shit, but it's like, come on. Like, don't fuck this up. Like, you are running an entire, like, it's a lot different. Like, he's in a different position than he was at Marvel. Like, at Marvel, you know, he just managed one fucking movie series but this it's like it's a whole like it's everything yeah it's like are you gonna be able to connect everything and then like are you just gonna keep trying to introduce like fucking niche ass superheroes because you managed to make the guardians work and no one really cared about the guardians until you did your shit i guess that's really what's about to happen and that's what's that is his specialty is making those lesser known and wackier characters popular and like bringing like more humanity to them but that's not how you build a cinematic universe you need yeah. to have the big players like you need to have aquaman you need to have batman you need to have like, superman you need to have Wonder Woman. that's what i'm saying like it's gonna be annoying as fuck because he's just gonna be like well i did it with the guardians like he's doing the fucking what's it called like monster squad or some shit yeah uh, i know i know what you're talking about yeah, and then he's also doing, like, a, a TV show off of Amanda Waller. Like, do we really need, like, what do we, we have gotten so much Amanda Waller content, and it's like, what more do we fucking need? <laughs> like, I don't, I genuinely don't, like, understand, like, what more we need from this. Like, why do we need a whole TV show? Like, that's what I'm confused about. Like, what more Amanda Waller content? Like, I feel like I know her character up and down. Like, she's... Like a corrupt person. Like, I mean, what more? Are, what more depth are they gonna add to her character? And like, 
I just, I don't know what more they're gonna fucking do. I just don't, I genuinely don't. Yeah, I have no idea. I think it just, to me, it just, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't know. Like, what more are you going to bring to the table for me to be like, okay, you got me. Like, yeah, I love Amanda Waller. She's my favorite character. Like, I just like, what, like, what more? What more? What more are you gonna, how much more are you honestly gonna make me fucking give a shit about this character? It's like, at, at the current moment where it stands, it's just like, she's like, whatever to me, you know, like, whatever the fuck they do, they do, you know? Yeah. That's what, that's just, that's the way I see it, you know? I don't know what more they can honestly do with her character. Uh, but, I mean, if, I mean, if fuck it, they make it good, then go nuts, sister. The only way I can see that show working is if each episode focuses on her trying to recruit, like, a different character and then just use her show as a way to introduce us to these smaller characters that will become more important later on. But at that point, yeah. why just have it focus around a wall or why not, you know, think of another way to do that? But Yeah, I just, like, I don't know. That's what I'm, like, concerned about. It's just, like, I get it. You know, like, you're trying to do this and that, but, like, at a certain point... It's just like, come on, come on, James Gunn. I get it. You made Guardians. Get over it. We get it. We get it. You made Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, congratulations. You want a fucking cookie at this point? Like, I mean, what more praise do you need from people? Like, everyone knows you made Guardians. They love it. Pop off, sister. Like, we got it. Here, you talking about Starfield? Yeah, go ahead. Go nuts. Yay, my time. My time to shine. So I've got about 40 hours into it. Uh, Pussy. Uh, yeah, I know. Weak sauce. Uh, let's start with optimization. I've been playing it on PC because I don't have the newer Xbox. Uh, <laughs> Poor. I know. Uh, the optimization settings are garbage. There's not even an FOV slider. Like. Oh. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, there's not an FOV slider. There's not a gamma setting or a contrast setting or anything like that. So that's not great. I'm running it all, all on low. I don't meet the recommended specs, but I do meet the minimum specs. So I run it on low, and I usually get 60 FPS pretty much everywhere. So I have, you know, I don't have too many technical issues. Which, in my entire 40 hours, I've only ran into one bug. So I will say this is, like, probably the most bug-free Bethesda game I've ever played. It's not fucking lying. I know. Like, and lying. it was just like, it was like, uh, it was a cutscene, because you know how like, they do their cutscenes, where it was like a group meeting, except one of the, the people didn't come into the meeting room. They were like three rooms over, and it kept cutting all the way over to them, and then their audio was super quiet, because, you know, my character is, you know, in a different part of this building. But yep. that that's the only glitch I've ran into. Other than that, pretty bug free, uh, which is Here. insane. Uh so it lying through your fucking teeth right now. Uh, before we get into gameplay, I'm going to talk about... I have a lot of praise for the game, but also a couple negatives. One of the negatives is there are so many fucking menus. There are so many menus. And you are navigating these menus constantly. Like Half the game is navigating menus. And you can definitely tell that they had it in mind to use... Like, people were going to be playing it with a controller. Because on PC, it is just really annoying to navigate. Uh and then there's a lot of loading screens granted my loading screens like the longest load time I, i've ever had is like five seconds like the loading screens are pretty quick but there are a lot of them you want to go into a building that's a loading screen you want to go into your ship that's a loading screen you want to go up in the space or travel to a different system that's a loading screen um so there's just a lot of loading screens it's not like i know a lot of people are disappointed that it's not like no man's sky where it's seamless like i can go from atmosphere into like orbit into landing you can't do that uh they're treated as separate instances so you, like if you're orbiting around a planet and you're in space that's an instance and if you want to land you're gonna have to go through a loading screen and a, a landing process um but that's really about it for the negatives for the most part um as i go on to talk about the stuff i'll bring up you know the others while it's appropriate but uh 
Let's start with character creation. Uh, pretty good. Like, the sliders and stuff. There's a lot of sliders. There's a lot of options. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Where the character creator really shines, though, is the traits system. So, traits are optional. You don't have to pick them for any of your character. But if you do, they're typically, you know, something that has, like, a really good buff, but also a drawback. Um, like, the traits I went with is I went with uh, Heroic Worship. So, I have the... Uh, the adoring fan from oblivion uh following me around you know he's you know he's pretty good i use that as a way just to always have a follower with me so i can have a pack mule if i like you know pick up too much stuff but i you know he's annoying so there's there's the drawback he's constantly just talking uh the other trade i went with was uh, wanted where you're a wanted criminal so every so often bounty hunters will show up and try to kill you and try to collect your bounty which i just added that in as a way to like kind of keep me on my toes and always get some like extra combat XP because you're always you know getting ambushed um well there's there's a lot of traits there's a lot of options there's a lot of backgrounds which is like uh you're like you know your character's background and that determines what your starting perks are i found that to not really be super important what perks it gives you because you can always just level up and use the skill points to unlock that perk line uh but it is definitely important for your dialogue options. Like, there's a lot of options based on your background. So, like, I'd say don't care too much about the perks that it starts with and more of, like, what character you're trying to play. And then pick your, your background based off of that. Um, the introduction is pretty good, pretty solid. You're not a prisoner. You're a miner, which is pretty cool. Uh, the mining a miner? Laser, yep, you're a miner. The, uh, the mining laser is sick as hell. Oh, fuck. So, like, in this game, you don't collect junk. Because I know in Fallout, you just collect everything. You pick up everything. You, uh, you know, turn it into scrap. In this game, you uh, collect minerals off, like, the elemental table. Like, the periodic table. And that's, like, your crafting. So, like, you go around and collect, like, iron, copper, tungsten, titanium, neon. Uh, stuff like that. And that's how you craft stuff. Which I think is pretty cool. And it, you know, it, it does kind of decentivize picking up everything but i just pick up everything anyways to sell it because i'm a little loot whore so you know um the gunplay is the best in a bethesda game that we've gotten i'm not gonna say it's amazing it's still not super good first person shooter like combat it doesn't touch an actual fps but this is supposed to be an you know an fps rpg so i'll cut it some slack uh the booster pack is really cool so it lets you, you know, fly around, jump around, stuff like that. And this game definitely has a lot more verticality in it than anything that Bethesda has done before. Which I think is just interesting. It makes combat a little bit more fun when you're jumping around and trying to get to, like, the high ground and, you know, floating in space and stuff. It's really cool. Um, ship combat. I don't like ship combat in games. I hate flying in video games. I just, I'm not good at it. I don't like it. You know, that's just not my thing. Uh, but it's pretty fun in this game. You know, based on your weapons, like, lasers will, like, break down shields. Missiles will, like, hit holes and, you know, do a lot of damage uh, based off of that. And then you have uh, electromagnetic, which is how you disable certain ship parts. And I think one of the, the coolest parts about the game and one of the most fun things to do in it is actually boarding enemy ships. So, like, you can break down their shields with, a, um, with your lasers and then... You can use the electromagnetic thing to target specific parts, and you can hit their engine. And then once their engine is out, they're like you know they're dead in their water; they can't move. And you just approach them, and you uh, air like sink your airlocks together, and you can board them. So you can actually go onto the enemy ship and clear out their cabin, like clear out all the pirates on there and all like the crew and stuff. And then after that, you can steal the ship to sell it or to keep it if you want to, or you can just you know go back to your ship and blow it up, which I think is super fun. Because the game is actually pretty challenging. I do play it on hard because I find Bethesda games are just painfully easy. Like Skyrim is one of the easiest games ever. So I, I am playing on hard. Um, and I think the most like fun encounter I've had is I was doing a space boss fight. Where I was fighting you know a, a really tough NPC ship. But I was like kind of near one of the end of one of the storylines. And I was getting obliterated like for like probably like two hours straight i was and i refused to change the difficulty because mama didn't raise a punk so i was like no nah, i'm staying on hard i went back and upgraded my ship i did all this stuff and i was still getting blown out of the water so i was like if i can't buy, uh, if i can't dogfight this guy if i can't beat him like that i'm just gonna board him 
So that's what I ended up doing, is I barely survived long enough to disable his engines and board him, and then I took out the boss like that, which I thought was super fun and, you know, a cool way to get around that, especially if, you know, you're like me and you're not inclined to space combat. Um, the dialogue and stuff, my biggest issues with, my biggest issue with Bethesda RPGs is it really doesn't feel like your choices matter. Like, you just usually have options of yes, yes with angst, and no. That's, like, pretty much what all the choices boil down to. I'm not going to say that has changed in this game, because I don't think it really has. A lot of your choices really feel like they don't matter. But it's definitely improved over Fallout 4 and Skyrim, I think. You know, if you, like, you know, I made one choice that affected this city. And then as I was walking around in the city, NPCs would comment on, like, you know, the choice I just made. And how that affects their lives and stuff. Which is pretty neat. It's a, definitely a lot more immersive. Um, and I think that's another thing they did really well in this, is the world building. They really built up the factions, and the world, and these characters, and these locations, and they built them up really nice. Like, I'm having fun being kind of immersed in this world. Um, I love the new dialogue minigame. So, like, you know in past, like in Fallout 4, and other Fallouts, if you go to, like, convince a character or something, if you go to persuade them, it just gives you, like, a, a percentage chance you'll succeed. Like, oh, you have 50% chance to make this, or 80% chance, or whatever. So that's not in this game. If you're trying to persuade someone of something, you have a minigame where they have a certain amount of pips that you need to fill to convince them. So say, like, you're trying to convince... Uh, here, here's an example. Uh, say there's, like, a police standoff, and you're trying to convince these guys to, like, like these hostages go and to surrender. And to do that, you need to fill up 10 persuasion pips. Uh, so you'll be presented with a bunch of different options, like... From easy to hard. Hard, or like easy, the easy choices will give you like one pip at a time. Or two pips at a time. While the harder choices will give you like eight. Or something. So you can convince them faster and have a greater success chance. But those options aren't likely to succeed. Except when it's contextually appropriate. Like, going the easy answer, or the easy option, isn't always the best option. In that situation where, like, you know, these these criminals are holding these hostages and stuff like that, one of the hardest choices I gave you, like, plus, like, seven pips was, like, you know, you're not going to get out of this, you're surrounded, it's only a matter of time before, like, you know, you get tired, you have to sleep or whatever, and, like, we're just going to come and get you anyways. And that, you know, was listed as a hard choice. But contextually, it made sense because, you know, it's true. They had no way of getting out. So, it, like, you know, it worked easier. It was, you know, a better choice to do that versus one of the easier options that was you know a safer bet so the new persuasion minigame is super fun another thing that i really am kind of mixed on is the new lock picking system like you know how like in skyrim and fall you just you know bobby pin you just set it in a spot and you just turn that's gone like my penis yep that's gone so now you have digi picks and yeah. basically there's a bunch of rings like you know you have outer ring and middle ring and inner ring based on like how hard the lock is with a bunch of holes in them. And you have to line up different patterns of pegs into these holes. That sounds like the Oblivion lockpicking system. There's pegs in it. I mm. didn't play Oblivion, so I don't... I, I could, what? Yeah, I didn't play Oblivion. I'm sorry. Hold on, let me, let me look at the lockpicking. Yeah. I'll look it up too, because I thought this was something like brand new to this game. No, the, 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 I mean, if the way you're describing it sounds like the Oblivion I could be wrong. No, I, it's not like this. In that one, you're pushing up the pins to a certain pressure to open it. In mm -hmm. this one, look at look up just uh, Starfield lock picking. That's what I'm doing, but I got a fucking oh, it's new. Yeah. So there's a bunch of rings, yeah. and you have to slot those pegs into those rings. Ooh, pegging. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. I have not been able to lock pick shit in this game. And I kind of oh, hate no, it. No, that's that's not. Oh no, wait, that reminds me of something, but I can't think of what game this is like. But okay, that's easy. It's it's really fun. It it definitely made lockpicking a lot more interesting because I fucking yeah. suck at it. <laughs> so basically, I hate it because like I'm gonna be honest, guys, I'm not fucking stupid. I'm I'm pretty dumb. I'm pretty I'm, dumb. I'm be honest, guys, I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, Let's see, what else? Uh, the voice acting is pretty solid. I haven't ran into any characters that sound like out of place or like they phoned are, it in. Are you silent in this? 
Or you like? Yeah, you, you go back to the silent protagonist. So there's no, you do not talk, which I think is yes. better. Yes. Because that shit was awful in Fallout 4. That shit was terrible. I like, I appreciate that they tried something new and they they went for it, but it did not work out. Uh, yeah, they should, they should pack it up better. Get you just it. have more options with a silent protagonist because you can just write so much more. You don't have to have someone record lines for it. So yeah, you just be like unbelievably sexist. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I try to think of like some of the funny dialogue you get to say when you have like those perks and shit. But, like I like uh, when the vault tech guy approaches your thing, you can just say "Go away." I just like my favorite. The only thing I liked about the Fallout Four one was like you'd choose something and say like, "I don't want to do that," and then it's like. I don't want to do that, you fucking idiot. Like, yeah. kill yourself. It's just it's not like, what Whoa. you typed out. It's like, where did all this aggression oh, come oh. from? Yeah, you know, it said, like, I'll help you, but I'm going to fucking shoot you. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> that, like, that was my only, like, thing that I did enjoy about it. It was like, I could pick this, and I'm probably about to say the most heinous thing to this motherfucker. And, like, that's the only thing I enjoyed about it. But, like, other than that, it took, like, it was trash. It was a step back. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> if you like it, like you're you're garbage. Um, I will say the companions I've met so far are pretty well written, but I think they're Any, not diverse enough in the sense of. Uh, Any good ones you could fuck? There's like three, and they're not really that good. Fuck. I know you can't fuck a bear like you can in Baldur's Gate three. So like, what's the point? Uh, fuck a bear in Baldur's Gate. 3. You can you can fuck a druid that likes to turn himself into a bear. So yeah, you can fuck a bear. Do you get to see the bear penis? No, but you do get to see a, the bear do some sexy poses. It's very weird. <laughs> like I'm gonna get this game now. <laughs> but uh, already downloading it. When I say the companions aren't diverse enough. It's not like, you know, their race or sex, like, sex or anything like that. It's They all come from the same faction, so there's not a lot of different viewpoints. <laughs> you know, like... Shut up. <laughs> in Skyrim, Please. you can get, like, you know, vampire, ancient vampire lady. You can get self sword. You can get wizard man who, like, hides underground. Like, there's a big variety of characters that come from a different, a lot of different backgrounds and have a different oh, viewpoints Lydia. in the world. Lydia. Lydia. In, uh... In Starfield, in Starfield, it's not like that. They all kind of come from the same faction, and there's not a lot of diversity, which makes them a little bit more boring, which is probably the reason. This is, like, the only Bethesda game where I've not had companions with me, like, at all. I've been doing pretty much everything solo, because none of I these mean, characters be, are super interesting. To be fair, I mean, I never had a companion, because I was like, you're a good character. I just had a companion, like, carry my shit, and like take the bullets away from me yeah. or arrows i mean the only like delphine i liked you know like you know my girl delphine like she had you know some depth to her i liked uh in the new vegas dead money dlc uh christine mm -hmm. christine yeah she had some christine was pretty sick um plus if you're a female you get the fucker no i'm kidding um but no i like they just like some characters do kind of have some depth to them, but like overall, like I mean, I just have you to like carry my shit. Yeah, <sighs> that was for you. But honestly, you go to your you can store stuff on your ship. So you're the way you actually you know like in Fallout Four, if you wanted to access all your building materials, you put it in the workshop. In this game, you put everything on your ship. So everything that's in your ship's cargo, you can access that from any workbench or anything like that. So that's, weight that's carrying cool. stuff around isn't a problem because you're constantly going back to your ship. Because you have to go to your ship to take off, you have to go to your ship to leave planets to land on them. So it's like, while you go on your ship, just store your shit like as that, you're passing that, through. You know what I mean? That's that's so sick because I'm such a hoarder when it comes to Bethesda games. I don't know what it is. I like to collect one of everything. Yep, I've done um, that already. I've started my collection. <laughs> I literally, it's just so fun, and, like, I just love feeling, like, such a fucking virgin. I think I have every single weapon in the game, like, the base version. I don't have a legendary of every weapon, but I have, I think, every weapon. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I just I just love feeling like a fucking virgin. <laughs> but, uh... 
yeah, so the gameplay is solid, the characters and stories are solid, the optimization can do some work, but, like, you have to go in with the expectation of this is a Bethesda game. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of, if you've played Skyrim and Fallout, you know what you're getting. Uh, I don't think it's better than Baldur's Gate 3. Your choices definitely don't matter as much. But I will say this game is easier to play. Like, you can just oh, yeah. get home from Fuck. work, turn it on, and just have a good old time, you know? Uh, ooh, the procedurally generated planets. So, a lot of the planets you go to are handcrafted. Like, if you go to any of the, like, planets that require you, like, to go to as part of the main story, you're, like, a faction quest line or something like that, odds are they're going to be pretty, like, dense and full of stuff to do. I haven't really landed on any, like, barren plan planets or stuff. I haven't really done too much of the exploring of that, but I know that you land, and you have a pretty wide area to walk in, but you can't just, like, land and then walk all the way around the planet. Like, when you land, it's in a section, and eventually you'll hit a wall. Um, but the areas that it gives you, like, are pretty big. Like, if, it, if you're sprinting from one end to the other, it's, like, 12 minutes to sprint across the entire thing from where you land. So, like, the areas are they're bigger than, like, what you're going to want to explore anyways. Uh, but, like, when you land, it auto-generates some points of interest. So, like, it might be, like, an abandoned mining building. It might be a, a cave. It might be a, like, alien statue or something like that for you to explore and go to. So, exploration is pretty fun and stuff. Mostly, I've been landing on planets, like, out of the way just to collect materials. Like, if I see this, oh, this planet has helium-3 on it, I'm going to land here and get some real quick. But that's about it. And that just requires you running around with your scanner open and it highlights all the minerals. Like, finding minerals and crafting components is not super hard. You don't really need to pay attention because everything gets highlighted anyways, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I've barely touched outpost building because a lot of the stuff you unlock later in your science tree, and I have not put a lot of points into my science tree other than the weapon crafting. What the fuck? I say weapon crafting and speeding up uh, research. Those are like the two like things. Uh, the skill trees. Uh, progression. So it works differently in this game than past Bethesda games. In Fallout, you just level up, you get skill points, and you just put them in those perks. In Skyrim, you get better as you do it. The more you do something, the better you get, you unlock perks. In this one... You use a skill point to unlock that perk line. So, like, say, like, in my character, I spec'd in the pistols. Because I like handguns. So, I'm, like, I'm doing, a, like, a gunslinger build, right? So, I use a skill point, and I unlock the first level of handgun. So, that's cool. I, have, I do 10% more damage with pistols. Awesome. Now, to unlock this, the, the second rank of that perk to do even more damage with pistols, you don't, you know, you don't just level up and put a skill point into it, and you don't just use pistols. You have to complete a challenge. So for pistols, it's like t kill 10 enemies with handguns, which is, you know, simple. But for like weapon crafting, if I want to level up my weapon crafting skill, I'll need to make 15 weapon modifications. And that will unlock the ability for me to purchase that second rank of the perk. Um, it's kind of trash. I like it. I think it's pretty cool. For some of them, it's an redundant. Like weapon crafting, to unlock rank 3, you have to make 15 weapon mods. The problem is... To get to rank 2, I've already made all the weapon mods I can for every pistol in the game. So at this point, I'm just modding weapons I'm not going to use just to upgrade the skill. So there's a lot of, there's some stuff that feels a little grindy about it. There's also a lot of perks that I don't think are really super good or important. Like just base damage resistance, like oh, physical damage deals 5% da less damage than you. That's kind of trash. Because... Event, like you get good armor pretty quickly and it just doesn't do enough or like food effects are 10 percent better you're not going to be eating food like that i mean you could if you're role playing or if you really want to like you know get into every crafting system but like i don't i have not made food once i have not tried to make food once i just you know i collect my med kits like your you know your stem packs equivalent and carry on <laughs> um but other than it kind of being bloated, I do like the new system. I think it's it's fun. So, that's pretty good. Um, I'd give it right now, because the main story isn't as pressing as uh, it is in past games. Like, in previous Bethesda games, the main quest line kind of, like, you know, it wants you to hurry through it. Like, in Skyrim, it's like, oh no, dragons are attacking, attacking the world, I need to hurry up and kill them. So, it's like, the game is always kind of urging you to do that main quest because it makes you feel like it's time sensitive even though it's not. Same with Fallout 4. Like, oh, I need to find my kid as fast as possible. 
I need to find my, my boy. Super fast. I think I didn't give a fuck. I know, but like the game still tries to push you to do that main quest. In this game, it is way more relaxed. Like there's so far I'm on like mission five out of twenty, and there's like no urgency at all. Like to the point where the main quest to me right now and at least in the, the first quarter of it is kind of boring. Uh, I don't know if it picks up later on. Because after 40 hours, I did, I've did. i done the two. I've done the United uh, Colonies faction storyline. I've done the Free Ranger, uh, the Free Star Collective faction line. And I've done a lot of side quests. Just random quests that you get from overhearing, like, you know, conversations and stuff. And talking to people around town and stuff. Uh, the faction storylines, super good. Really enjoyed them. Really well written. Super interesting. Especially the United Colony storyline where it talks about the Terror Morphs. And the Terror Morphs are kind of like the death claws of this universe. Where it's like that top dog that scares the shit out of you, you know? When you're lower level. Uh, super interesting to learn about those and kind of their lore and backstory of that. And learning more about the lore of like the, the Colony Wars and stuff. Uh, and then the Freestar Collective. You just get to become a space cowboy, man. You, just, you get to be a space sheriff. You get to go around, help people. Help free, you know, help ranchers and stuff. Discover some conspiracies, do some detective work. It was super, super interesting. So the faction storylines so far have been way more interesting than the main storyline. Like I said, it could pick up. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, kind of boring. Overall, I'd give the game, um, probably like an 8 out of 10. Or a 7 out of 10. You could argue for a 7, but I'm going to go with 8 because I've been having a lot of fun with it and I'm, I'm, I'm being gener generous. I don't think it is um, better than some other RPGs we've gotten this year. Mainly Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is like 10 out of 10. Once in a decade kind of game, so it's going to be kind of hard to beat. But if you enjoy Skyrim, if you enjoy Fallout, you're going to like Starfield. I think Starfield is the best Bethesda Studios game. Like, it's better than Skyrim and it's better than Fallout 4. They've taken those ideas from those both of those games, picked out the best ideas and the best systems that work, and improved upon them, which is what, you know, a sequel should do. Or, like, you know, the next step in a, in a game dev's, like, you know, work should be. So everything is improved, which is cool. Um, oh, I know I'm kind of scattered, but shipbuilding is super dope. Uh, it's really deep, really complex. It is an in-game activity because it costs like 400000 to build a ship from scratch. Uh, but, you know, you can have anything from different rooms, different habitats, different weapon systems. Uh, like plating and stuff like that can be used as armor, boosters, engines, reactors, all kinds of stuff. It's super deep, it's super complex, and it's really fun. Um, the outpost system in the building, I haven't touched it too bad or too much. Like, not very very much at all but it is a lot less complex than fallout 4 uh where in fallout 4 you'd have like one by one squares that you would place down something like that and this one you have prefabs like you just have this is like a big room because everything's like everything looks like a space station you know what i mean like a nasa it, they said the style of the game is nasa punk and i mean yeah it is uh, so a lot of the the rooms in the building and the systems and the settling systems you do are just prefabs. So it's not really super deep. Like you can't make very deep structures yet that I've seen. Maybe there's something that I just don't know. I haven't, you know, I've yet to mess with the system like that. But um, yeah, I think it's 8 out of 10. It's really fun. I'm going to keep playing it. I'm probably going to play it after we, we, we wrap up the podcast because that, that's what I was playing before we started. Uh, it's pretty good. I like it. I think it's definitely worth the asking price because it's a game you're going to be able to play again and again and again. It's a, it's a Bethesda Game Studios game. You're like, you know what you're getting into. It's a lot of content. It might not be super deep content, but it is a lot of content. And I think it's enjoyable. So that's my, my thoughts on uh, Starfield. But I think it's on the Game Pass. If you can just play it on the Game Pass, go for it. Yeah, I have the Xbox. I'm like, do I get it on my PC? Because, like, I do technically meet the requirements. And it's like, I don't, like... Because the game's optimization is such shit, even on low settings, the game still looks pretty good. Yeah, so, I, I don't know. I'm still, like, dividing it, really. It's like, what do I get it on? You know? Yeah. Uh, I will say consoles are locked at 30 FPS. So, if you want to play in 60, you have to play on PC. I mean, I don't really give a fuck, bro. That's fair. I don't really give a fuck. Then we can talk about uh, 
Mortal Kombat 1, which comes out next week for people that own the Collector's Edition or Premium Edition, which I will be getting because uh, I need that five-day early access to start pumping out content because uh, here on this channel, which I should make an announcement now before we get into talking about Mortal Kombat, uh, I know I've been doing the podcast and it's like the only thing we've been uploading on this channel, but I do plan on covering more first-person shooters on this and the first one being Payday 3, so once that game comes out, I'll be actually uploading videos other than the podcast like you know weapon guides heist guides oh, funny scary. moments shit like that uh so yeah there will be more content coming to this channel but while we're talking about Mortal Kombat 1 please go check out my fighting game channel which is what I've been working on for the past year that I was not working on this channel uh very excited for that and I'm I'm definitely getting the premium edition of Mortal Kombat to get the uh, early access because you get it comes out the 19th but if you get the hundred dollar edition uh, you can play it on the 14th. So, that's what I'm doing. I guess I know who bought the $400 or a dollar. Fuck. I mean, I bought the $100 edition of Starfield to play it early. So, I mean, I had the extra money, so why not? You know, what else that's am I going to do? Um, but yeah, Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, my plans for the for that is pretty much every day I'm going to upload a, like a tower run while I work on other videos. So, like, there will be a video up every day at least. To make like time for me to work on like funny moments, character guides, uh, Rainbow Six guides. No, oh, no, no. I actually played some Siege today, and I, I hate to say that I actually had fun. Uh, I don't know. It just looks like dog shit to me. To be it's honest. pretty. It's bloated. There's too many operators. There's too much stuff. They really just need to rework or cut some of the stuff out. But uh. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 1. Uh, since the last podcast we did, they did another combat cast where they went over Sindel, Rain, and Shao Kahn. And I'm going to talk about that. Uh, Sindel looks like she's going to be broken at launch just completely. Because, uh, as you know, the game has the cameo system, which is like kind of like your assists. Like if you play Marvel vs. Capcom, you know, you call in another character, they do an assist. It's like that, but in Mortal Kombat. And the game revolves around the cameo system. It is... If you don't like the cameo system, you're not going to like the game. Because I, I played the beta. I played the beta for like 40 hours. I played hundreds of matches. I played it a lot. Uh, you need to know the cameo system and how to use it if you want to win. Or have any chance of winning matches. Like, it is the core of the game. Whether people like it or not. Um, and... I'm sorry. Sindel... It's, like, it's kind of trash. What? It's just like... Yeah, just being heavy companion... It's just, I think um, once you play it, you'll change yeah. your opinion. It everyone, yeah. everyone that says they don't like it, hasn't had enough time with it because once you start using it, you realize how much oh, yeah. it op like opens yeah. up options for combos, opens up yeah. routes for defensive abilities and stuff, and like encounter play. It yeah, it's good. yeah. I'm just I'm just talking shit. Talk shit. I know. Uh, <laughs> But Sindel breaks the system. She has so many moves that, like, say you're calling out your cameo to do an attack. She can just cancel out that attack. She can time a move where she, take, like, stuns your cameo. So guess what? Your cameo attack doesn't come out. There's another move she can do where uh, she can mind control your cameo. So next time you go for a combo breaker, uh, you don't get your breaker. You still get hit, and you still get punished, and you still get comboed. And it still takes all three bars of your meter. So you lose all your meter for no for nothing. Uh, and then if she enhances that move, she gets one free use of your cameo. So your cameo comes out, say you're using like Sonya, and you're using her to attack me. As Sindel, I can amplify that move and mind control your cameo. So next time I do a cameo attack, I use your cameo. Which means I could do like a combo string into your cameo, into a combo string into my cameo, into another combo string into my cameo. So you can do like... Like, even in the beta, I was able to do, like, 60% combos with Liu Kang. Like, the combos and stuff, people that were complaining about MK11, about not having a lot of creativity in combo routes and stuff, which I agreed to with some extent, because, like, in MK11, there are a lot of characters where there's one combo that you want to do because it is just simply the best combo. So why do another one? In this game, things are swaggy. The way you can string stuff together and, uh, you know, open up new combo routes and use the air combos, which air combat is back since forever i don't think we've had air combat since the 3d games uh it's it's incredible it is so much fucking fun it is so fun to just to load it up and just try something new out and i think that's where the cameo system is also going to shine because you know say you like playing a smoke uh 
and based on what cameo you choose, you can turn Smoke into like a super heavy combo character, super heavy 50 50 character. Spider Man? Yep, you can choose Spider Man. I uh, hope they do like a stupid reference to him. That makes no sense. <laughs> Okay. Like, no, I just hope, like, a cameo character, like, you know, like, how the lines, they, like, reference something else. Like, how they do something like that? Like, they just reference Spider-Man, and he's just like, what the fuck? Like, uh, oh, is it, like, Injustice, when they make, like, a reference to, like, Mortal Kombat or some shit, like, with Raiden or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. That'd be cool. That'd be pretty funny. It'd be something that with Johnny Cage saying it, I bet. Yeah, like... You remind me of a guy that shoots webs. Yeah. Didn't your uncle die? But, uh, yeah, the cameo system looks pretty cool. And Sindel breaks that. So Sindel looks like she's going to be broken. She also looks pretty cool. Uh, Rain is the premier zoner of this game. Uh, if you played Robocop or like Scarlet in MK11, probably, probably going to like Rain. He has a bunch of different projectiles. Uh, he can change the timing on those projectiles. He can hold it up and let it go and really, you know, to, you know, change up your pace and throw your opponent off. You can also dash cancel it. So if I'm charging up like a water bolt, I can just dash cancel out of it and go for a throw or go for a mix up or whatever I want to do. He does, just like every character in MK1, have 50-50s because we're going back to that now, uh, of apparently, which, yay, great, which I'm not a big 50-50 guy, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'll adapt. Uh, Rain has 50-50s. Uh, still, he looks like he's gonna be more of a overhead character, but you know, with cameos and with his special moves, and you know, we didn't get to see everything on the combat cast, only just a small bit of what he can do. Uh, probably gonna be able to enforce those pretty good. Um, he has a weird portal move where he can set up two portals and go through them and travel through them, but he has to set them up individually unless he enhances it, in which case, one just shows up next to the opponent next to him so he can go in through them and he can do a jump in attack and it's pretty sick he also has a ground bounce off of uh his air combo which means he's going to be really good in the air because anyone that has a ground bounce off of the air combo is is really good like sub-zero could do some disgusting stuff in the beta with his ground bounce so that's pretty cool um and then we have the striker cameo striker cameo has 50 50s he has cop bop overhead cop sweep low he has frag grenades which can extend combos in the air and and you know be a zoning tool police brutality coming right up uh but i, I mean i'm glad striker's back in and he can actually put the opponent i in. love striker striker in mk9 was one of the worst characters in that game but he was so fucking That's fun ha that's hilarious because he was my favorite. Yeah, he was. He's dog shit in MK9. <laughs> I I don't even remember honestly. I just I remember liking him. I was like, fuck yeah, cop. Just like <laughs> I just no, I just love it because it's just like this normal dude and like this dude shoots fire with his fucking mouth. I know. Fire. It's like here's an alien with blades that come out of his arms, and here's this guy with gun. Yeah, you did, dude. dude <laughs> like, like I thought, like you know, at least with Johnny Cage, like motherfucker got powers, but like this dude just got a gun and a taser. Yep. <laughs> like I mean, yeah, you, I guess you could say about like Sonya and shit. Like I mean, Sonya is technically a normal. Sonya person. has weird energy arm bracelets. Okay. Yeah. But he's just got a gun. My man has a taser, a police baton, and a pistol. <laughs> and nothing but police brutality. But uh, yeah. he looks pretty good. Shao Kahn also looks pretty good all the characters look really good there's not been a character that i've been disappointed with except for maybe like astra astra looks lame as hell Bro, uh, fucking ermac ermac looks fucking i really hope they take the feedback they've gotten about his appearance and change that shit before he comes out they, he's Bro. dlc there's time to change it we got time Bro, that he looks like... awful how do you fumble the bag so bad you have the best ermac outfit ever unused in mk11 as concept art and you decide not to use that shit everybody right. wanted you to use that shit just make that his mk1 design that's all we want <laughs> or like you know make something similar to his you know like original like mk1 yeah listen there's gonna be alternate outfits so he's gonna have a classic outfit you know what i mean like i know it's gonna be in there make that shit his default because his default should not be this bad my man looks like a dried nutsack <laughs> Bro, it's it's horrible. it's so bad and then you have Quan chi looking pretty cool and takeda looking like the best he's ever looked in the same shot and you have ermac <laughs> i mean hanzo 
I hope he's, they don't make him a Hanzo Hasashi. It said Takeda was his name, so. Can you imagine that? Like, you... We still don't know if Scorpion is Kwai Liang or uh, Hanzo Hasashi yet, which is weird. Um, one of mm -hmm. Takeda is Hanzo. I mean, it'd be really weird. I doubt that that's the case, but it'd be really weird. Uh, Shao Kahn is a stance character. He has axe stance and hand stance. So he can do, like, ground pounds and throws and stuff with his axe that'll leave it in the ground. Uh, which is cool, because whenever he has his fists out, he has different moves. Like, his moves change and have different frame data and stuff like that. So, like, the axe stance, you know, is a bit Fist. slower, but has better range and does, a little, you know, more damage. Wait, so they're bringing back, like, the old, like, like where you have to, like, you no. switch between... No, no, no. He just, different moves that he does slams his axe into the ground, and that's when he transitions. So, like, if I do a ground pound and, like, leave my... Transgender? Yeah. Uh, so, say I do an axe move, and I slam him into the ground it. and stuff, that will transfer me into the handstands. And then you can do, like, a command grab where you grab him and slam him on the axe head in the ground, and you pick it back up. So, you're constantly doing grabs and moves to switch between these two stances. It's not like you press a button. It's not like the 3D games. Ah, uh, I thought that's what, yeah, I was like... Damn, they're bringing that back? That's kind of sick. I'm for that. But yeah, Shao Kahn has an axe in this game instead of a hammer. So, Or General Shao. Sorry, he's not Shao Kahn. It's General Shao. No. That's what I was say. What the? My bad. That? My bad. Uh, Motaro cameo looks pretty cool. He has a teleport, which you can combo in and out of. Uh, I don't know if that's off of certain moves or not, but in the combat cast, they said that you can teleport and continue your combo, which what is going to be insane. What about the LeBron cameo? Nah, nah, that's multiverses, bro. We're talking about Mortal Kombat. Oh, uh, LeBron, he's in Mortal Kombat. Nah, John Cena is, though. <laughs> that's hilarious. I think I think it was confirmed that the, he's... He is. Do he is. Him and, uh... Uh, fucking... Who does, uh, Omni-Man's voice? Um, I'm... J Jack J.K. Simmons. Simmons. J.K. Simmons. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna return. Uh... Minor rant, the, the guest characters in that combat pack fucking suck. They they suck so bad. It, look back at like at MK11 or MKX, you have Predator, Jason, Alien, Leatherface. Those are banger guest characters. MK11, you got Rambo, Robocop, Spawn, Terminator, LeBron, you know. And then who do you have in MK1? You have uh, you have you have Superman clone one, Superman clone two, and John Cena, and LeBron, and it's just like what the fuck. Okay, I like the Peacemaker show. I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. I don't want him in Mortal Kombat though. I, Omni Man's cool. I know everybody likes him. I like the Mark, the Think Mark meme is great. You know, Invincible. I haven't watched it. Heard it was pretty good. I it's okay. You know, one Superman clone, I'm fine with having. If you guys want Omni Man, you can take Omni Man. I'm, I like Homelander more because I've read the boys' comics and I've watched that show. I just have more involvement with that. And then we have Homelander. We don't need two Superman clones. Just pick one. Just pick Ew. one. But what happens if he does like a power up where he drinks mother's milk and. You know? That would be a pretty sick move. He'd like heal a little bit. I mean, yeah. there's been moves like that in Mortal Kombat before. So, like, Rambo can eat a bug and heal a little bit. Or he just, like, rips off their shirt, pops the titty out, and just starts sucking. I don't know about that one. Drains the health. Um, but yeah, Mortal Kombat 1 looking good. We're nine days out from it coming out, uh, and we still don't know the full roster. There's, I think, two characters left to be shown yet. Uh, I mean, we know who they are because of the leaks. It's Damn Reiko and Nataro. No, they're not returning, Fuck. sadly. I know, I, I wanted Taven so bad, man. I want, at least as a cameo, something, man. But no nope. fucking meat's gonna be a cameo character. The, he is rumored to be the last one. But uh Shijinko made it! Shijinko's a cameo! He's in it! My boy Shijinko! <coughs> you, man, I fucking I swear to god. And if you to... if you uh, look at his, the gameplay trailer where Shijinko's in it, one of his cameo moves takes a special move from the opponent. Like, cause you know, Shijinko's whole thing is learning from masters and copying people's moves. And that is the exact <laughs> idea I suggested in my like top 10 characters I want more come at one wish list video. I was like, just have him take an opponent's move. Like, that'd be great. And they did it. That's what he does. That's sick as fuck. I cannot, I'm, you should so. My day I, one combo is gonna be Smoke and Shijinko. I think that's gonna be my day one combo. Or Havoc yeah. and Shijinko. Havoc looks sick as fuck. 
I can't wait for the game to come out in my theory. Or, well, I don't know if it's really a theory, but I'm right about something. And I saw from the leaks that I'm right. Uh, is it that Kronika is back as the main villain? Because that is not no, a good a, call for me. The post credit scene. Oh. Okay, don't tell me that because I don't want to it spoiled. But Kronika's yeah. back as the main I, bad guy. And I, that I, is I, so I, lame. I think I said it as like one of our po- in one of our podcasts or something. Or when we were talking about it. And I was fucking right, baby. I was fucking right. I'd forgotten about it then. Uh, well, I mean, like, I don't know if I said it directly, but I know I mentioned, you know, a little some some, and I was fucking right, baby. It was so fucking sick when I read that, and I was like, fuck yeah, but baby, I was right. I was right, baby. Let's fucking go. But, uh... Baker was right. Oh. Uh, Kronika's is back as the main villain. Who liked Kronika in the first place, man? Out of all the villains in Mortal Kombat, she's the lamest by far. Yeah, I, I don't really give a fuck for that storyline. Yeah, MK11. I mean, I liked MK11 story, but I'm just I'm sick and tired of the time travel stuff. I just wanted like a good tournament storyline. That's all I want. But no, we got apparently, and more combat ones gonna have more time travel shenanigans in it. And I just I don't understand what every writer's obsession is with time travel. Why does everybody have a time travel boner? I don't get it. I mean, why not? You don't like time travel? Not when it's done shitty, and it's done shitty like 90% of the time. What? Look at the Flash, yeah. my guy. Look at the Flash show. Look no at everything shit. past season three. Uh, I mean, yeah. I think that's well documented. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> just stop doing time travel stories. I mean, it could be good. We we don't know. You know, we don't know. It could be really good. It could be one of the 10%, I believe. Bullshit. <laughs> I believe the writers of Another Realm might be able to do something good. You know what? I also, while we're here, I, I love all the crybabies on Twitter whining about how Jade is, Jade isn't in the game. I'm She's glad she isn't. In the game. No, Jade isn't in the game. She's not, or she is. She is not. Jade is not a playable character. She's not a cameo. She's not in the game at all. She's referenced in like That's some hilarious. of the, the dialogues and stuff. But now I love in MK11 for the longest time it was the Molina fans crying all the time, and now it's Jade fans crying all the time, and I just think it's funny. The real thing is like who gives a fuck? Exactly, play a different character, try something new. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else, or what are we talking about next? That's that's my thoughts. More come out one is gonna be dope. Expect a lot of content on it. It's gonna be. Alright, so boys, all right, let's get into the juicy stuff. All right. So, basically, uh, Modern Warfare, I don't know where, basically was like, all right, we install like a new AI thing, can't be saying nothing racist anymore. Which, like, I mean, come on, it's understandable. Like, you know, I feel like no one, no, no one's really got to argue that or whatever, right? But, hold on, let me actually get the article. Okay, so um, I'm reading it right now. It's a technology called Tox Mod from Modulate AI. It was purpose built for use in video games. It uses advanced machine learning to analyze the nuances of each conversation in order to determine toxicity. Modulate says Tox Mod is capable of learning the code of conduct for any given game and provides reports to the moderation team so they can decide what action is appropriate to take against toxic players. In Call of Duty games, Tox Mods will be used to identify in real time and enforce against toxic speech, including hate speech, discriminatory language, harassment, and more. So yeah, now you have an AI listening to all of your your game chat. Uh, so good luck. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right. So all I really gotta say about it, honestly, like I, you know, whatever. It it is what it is. Whatever. Yeah. If I can. I just like the only thing I hope is like if I'm just like talking to you, like say I'm talking to you and I'm just like, Noah, you fucking suck. You yeah, exactly, dumbass. exactly. Because you, like that, you talk that, shit to your that's, friends. That's like my main thing is like, is it gonna be able to detect that? Because like once if I say it with some hate behind my voice, once I'm like, Noah, you fucking suck, dude. Come <laughs> on, like maybe I'm pissed off or some shit, right? Yeah. Like, is it gonna detect that and then, like, I get fucking banned because I'm, like, being hit? I mean, like, obviously, like, I wouldn't be saying anything, like, 
fucking you know terrible but like i'm like the point being like once if i'm just like just really pissed off at you because you did something stupid and i like i blow up on you like and then like they're like hey buddy you can't be you can't be harsh to him that's that's not that's yeah, there's, not nice there's a difference between shit talking the enemy team and shit talking your friend you know what i mean yeah that's what i'm like you know like also like you know like i don't know i just like you know, it is what it is. Like people are gonna complain. Cause, Bro, you know. we should do a segment on on the podcast when that actually goes into effect, where we just load up Modern Warfare and go to game chat, just like a private match game chat, just me and you, and just yell at each other and see how long it takes for us to get banned. Yeah, let's hop on like our burner <laughs> accounts or some shit. Yep. <laughs> like you fucking fuck, you slut. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I wonder if like. They're gonna like if anything could be legally held up in court. Like when someone says something like drastic as fuck. Right? Do you remember sitting down to play Call of Duty on December fifth, two thousand twenty-four? Yeah. Um, Do you remember playing you a team deathmatch on Rust? What did you mean by <laughs> I'm gonna take your first ball? I'm not even gonna finish that sentence. What did What did you mean by that? <laughs> we brought Chris Hansen that? in. What do you mean by like, that? Take a cookie. H- that, no, that, take a cupcake. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that motherfucker got caught twice. That's hilarious. I know. I know. <laughs> bro, bro, bro said run it back. Bro did not learn <laughs> from his mistakes. Bro ran it back. Yeah, now that's wild as fuck. But anyways, like, like you know, it, it's like a good system, you know, keep your community clean or whatever. But like, you know what my complaint is? Okay. All right, so we got this technology that can detect that. Great, cool, whatever. Great. What about AI to detect, like, I don't know, uh, fucking cheaters? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Me, they got ricochet. Like, you're telling me, okay, right? Like, you know, it can detect when, like, someone's being racist or some shit. You know, cool, whatever, you know. Motherfuckers, like... Like, you're telling me that the Warzone, literally, like, around, like, season four or five, when it first, like, in Warzone 1, it had such a huge problem with cheaters. And then, like, it, like, it was, like, there was videos everywhere, just, like, either motherfuckers cheating themselves, or, like, just getting killed by a cheater. And, like, it was such a big problem, and, like, everyone was talking about it. Like, you're telling me we can't use these AI programs to make a better system to detect cheating? Like, you know, like, okay, they can detect when they're, someone's being racist or hateful or... Sure, great. But, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean... I would like to play a game without getting fucking shitted on by a hacker, you know? That'd be, that'd be swell. That'd be... From what I mean, I've heard, it... It's been better in the recent games, but still not I mean, fantastic. Yeah, but, like, I'm just saying, like, if we're getting this so advanced where, like, we're going to have AI listening to what we say, so we're not being, like, racist or whatever, like, so you, you can't tell me, a cheater. Like, you can't, like, throw me, like, a fucking bone and, like, I make mean, it to where... Honestly, those anti-cheat softwares probably do use some form of AI. I don't know enough about it. To, to really talk about it. Well, I mean, honest. like, probably, like, now, but, like, I'm talking, like, I I want, like, I want you motherfuckers to make an AI so where I can play a game and, like, I don't have to worry about some little fucking kid throwing aimbot at my ass. Like, I just, like, that's just so frustrating to me. It's just, like, playing a game and then there's just this stupid little kid that bot hacks off a of fucking MySpace, and then I don't know. I mean, it's just like for all we know, those programs could use AI. I don't know. I mean, now, but I'm saying like I then. mean, AI is also only like really come like to be good enough to do this type of stuff in like the last year or so. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, come on, hurry it up. Like, you want them to go back in time and put the AI yeah. back in there? Yeah, I want to <laughs> fucking trans back to when I was playing Modern like, Warfare 2019. Uh, no, I'm talking like 2012 uh, when I was playing fucking. You want? Uh, yeah, the... AI was not that like, was not a real thing back then, homie. I don't give a fuck. 
my man is mad the shit that exists now did not exist in the past. My man is just like... That's what I'm saying, bro. That's fucked up. That's just fucked up. But it exists now. I I don't think it's fair. I think you're just crazy, man. I think you're just... I think we lost you. I think I am schizophrenic. I think you're ready for bed. That's what I think. I think I'm borderline schizophrenic. Uh... No, but like, uh, yeah, like, I don't know. I just like, I feel like now if AI is getting this advanced, like, honestly, like, hopefully, like, it improves better cheating systems. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they'll like, we'll find a way to apply it to that. Because, like, shit's getting ridiculous at times. Like, and, like, motherfuckers don't try and hide it anymore. Like, you know, they, like, they do not care. That's, that's also the problem. It's just, like, they don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's also what scares me is these motherfuckers are so confident that they won't get caught that they'll literally like motherfuckers live stream themselves hacking <laughs> like like they don't care like they genuinely don't give a fuck like no one cares everyone's just like eh fuck it I'm gonna live stream myself hacking what are they gonna do ban me like, <laughs> Yeah, like that's what's fucking wild to me. It's like they have, they do could give less of a fuck if they get banned, so they just live stream and it's just like, what is your hacks that good? Like they're just not gonna detect it. I don't know. Well, I I'm sure they'll do some kind of post about Modern Warfare Three saying this is our new Ricochet improvement. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it'd be nice. I just like, they will. I guarantee they will. They'll do it. I, I'm just saying, like, you know, if you're gonna do it for this, like, improve that, I mean, like, I get the whole importance of, you know, keeping shit not toxic, whatever. Like, I can tell I you right it. now, I'm catching a ban. I've been playing a lot of gunfire recently, and I've been talking so much shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's like, like, I get, like, you know, people saying racist shit or whatever, blah, 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 but, like, I think, like, borderline good old-fashioned shit talking like come on we there ain't can't. nothing wrong with that but just like, like loading into line like you're garbage kid you're fucking trash you're trash yeah like we can get rid of that like yeah like i can what is can call of duty it. if not just a vestige for shit talk yeah yeah like sure you know <laughs> and an n-word gets thrown around uh, fucking every Call of Duty lobby. Like, I'm, like, there are literal people doing speed runs. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, you just have to go into a Call of Duty lobby and say, I'm black, and then guess what response you're gonna get? Someone calling you the N-word. So. That's Call of Duty. That's the culture. <laughs> That's the Call of Duty. We're fucking defending it's, this. It's, we can't be defending. I'm not defending it. That's just how it is. I mean, I'm all for it, but I just, they, I don't want the AI to go too far. That's my thing. Because yeah. there, there's a difference between good natured shit talk, like competition shit talk, and then like just malicious intent. Yeah. You like, know, I like band of malicious I, people that like are actually out there to like, you know, hurt people's feelings and cause harm and stuff. But like if like I load into a lobby and this dude's calling me trash and I call him trash back, we're buddies. We're bros now. That's just how it works. Yeah. I wanna tell this kid I fucked his mom, man. Right? Exactly, yeah. And then he'll be like, you know, he'll go he'll go home, he'll get off the game, like yeah. maybe he did fuck my mom. He'll be, yeah. Dad? Is that you? Yeah. Dad? Dad? And then, and then all of a sudden, you're a father now. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, you play Call of Duty with him. And then whenever he throws the yeah. search in the S&D game, you just beat his ass. Yeah, for real. You get drunk a little and then just beat the fuck out of him. Yep. <laughs> so what? Um, and that's uh, Call of that, Duty. That's the <laughs> that's the culture. Yeah. What they need to do is they need to implement that shit in like Rust or some shit. Like League oh my Legend. god, yes. Please put it. The League has some real shit chat monitoring, man. <laughs> I was playing a game against AI and someone called me like some some homophobic slurs. And it's like we're playing against bots, man. Like, what do you want from I, me? <laughs> my shit, like the the one thing that I think it's like. It's just like if you play against like Chinese players, it's like monitored by like their government or whatever. So if you say some shit about like uh, Tiananmen Square or whatever, like, I can never tell if the videos doing that are real or fake or not. They gotta be real. Like where you like, see I clips mean, and stuff of like people clearing lobbies, like 
Every time I watch one of those, I'm like, is that is that real? Is I real honestly do that? think it's real. I think it's real. Like, I mean, because if it is, like, it's funny as fuck. <laughs> like, can you imagine just like playing in, fucking in China and someone says Tiananmen Square and then like the government's just showing up at your fucking door? Some like, dude just hops out of a bush. One guy like pulls out like the top of a trash can, M16 ready or something. Yeah, it, no, it's just like, uh, no, I think those are real. Those has got to be real. Like, I'm sure, like, some of them are probably fake, but I feel like, you know, the ones where, like, one person says it and then, like, one person gets hit, I, I have a general feeling this hurt. Are you playing a game right now? No. I can see the reflection of some shit in your glasses. Don't lie to but, me. But, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, like, I hope it just, like, doesn't have, like, too much of an effect on shit, honestly. But. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I'm sure once it like, goes just, into effect, we'll we'll cover it. You know, like people saying racist shit, whatever. Like, yeah, sure, get that out of there. But like, you know, just being like, I think classic shit talking. Like, apparently, it's supposed to measure your tone or whatever. But like, people like do sound aggressive when they, they're just like going back and forth. Like, yeah, ah, your dog shit. Like, I don't know. I hopefully there's just like it's not like super overboard, where like I could still like. At least be like, you fucking suck or some shit like that, you know? I can't wait when you're in a lobby and you're just list, like, you don't don't say anything. Just listen to the shit talk and just watch as everyone leaves the lobby because they're getting fucking banned. <laughs> nah, I, yeah, I hope, it, I hope, like, the bans are, like, live. Like, yeah, but, please. Just, like, like banned for inappropriate language or something. Nah, I want, like, you know, like, if they say the N-word, I want them to be, like, halfway through that word. <laughs> And like just immediately, <laughs> just boom. <laughs> just the AI knows what you're gonna say. <laughs> yeah, just like it cuts you off immediately. You're just like, it's like banned for inappropriate you... language. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. Like that would that would be hilarious. Like anyone that says otherwise, like that's pretty fucking funny. Bro, I would watch compilations of that all day long. I'm just live bands <laughs> of people oh talking shit and Call of Duty live. Just like I fucked your mom. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh my god i got him i hope <laughs> Dude, I, hope, I hope it'd be even better if you're playing warzone on the live mics like the death mics like you just mow someone down and it's just like you stupid yeah. piece of and i hope those motherfuckers with like the mic <laughs> that like cause someone else to echo like if they get banned too because like whoever's talking <laughs> like echoing off their yeah. mic. you just get banned for having a piece of shit mic yeah <laughs> and it just says like haha Shut up, bro, boy. You're fucking banned. <laughs> I hope, like, that's what I hope, like, with the AI system, that this is, like, what they're gonna do for, like, monitoring, like, ban and shit. I hope they, like, just have the AI say, like, like, trash talk them, like, get banned fucking losers and shit. <laughs> like, you're banned for 10 years or some shit like that. Like, that would be hilarious in my eyes. Like, if they just, like, fucking add little, like, messages. <laughs> Cause I, I don't know. I like, like I said, I hope they also improve cheating systems. Like I get what their fighting is important and whatnot, but like they do need to improve like fighting against hackers. Cause like these motherfuckers are getting bolder than ever. Like they will track your ass through the wall and kill you. And they don't give a fuck about that kill cam. They'll know you watch it and they'll see you and they do not care. Yeah. That's what's crazy to me is like these fucking hackers just don't give a fuck. It's I mean, honestly, it's honestly like kind of sad. We live in a, we live in modern gaming, brother. You live in a society. I can't wait for someone uh, to, to hack me in Baldur's Gate, join my yeah. game and kill me. But I no, I and then shit. like moving on to you know last time it was like so apparently they came out and said that after this uh, the writer strike they're apparently heading for the gaming industry which yeah. like. I, like, I get it. People gotta get paid, but, like, I feel like... I mean, I haven't heard of, like, any complaints about, like, the gaming writer industry, and I feel like, you know, if it was that big of a problem in the gaming industry, like, one of those motherfuckers already started while this is going on. They're like, hey, you know what? That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like, I understand writer, like, you know, we never really know what goes on behind, behind closed curtains and stuff, but I feel like... The gaming industry has a bigger problem with crunch and just working devs like eighty-hour weeks, not paying their overtime, not oh, letting yeah, them go Rockstar, home and see their kids. Yeah. 
<laughs> like, I mean, I mean, fuck them kids, you know. Like, I'm sure, really. like the writer, like issues and stuff like that, and not getting royalties and not being appreciated and stuff like that. That you know, that happens and it sucks and stuff. But I feel like the, the gaming industry as a whole just has a lot of issues they need to work on. Yeah. How about you know what I would love is instead of going on strike to get paid more, maybe like we should like go on strike to get like a release a fully finished game at release you know that would be Baldur's Gate 3 baby it came oh, out for the pretty bug okay. free full game okay. release no saying, microtransactions I'm just saying like it'd be nice like at least just one full game of it just not being like un- unfinished like I, unfinished it's, it's honestly shit. it's honestly pissing me off like it's just like Am I gonna buy this game and like the story's unfinished and then like okay the whole point of DLC isn't to finish the goddamn story in the DLC. It's, it's to add to it. it. I don't want to wait for the ending to a goddamn story in a DLC like and fucking Battlefield 5 is a perfect game like oh my god like that motherfucker came out so unfinished. Single player, I think, had one mission, and then the rest was locked. Multiplayer, like, their big, like, mode they had or whatever the fuck was locked. You couldn't play that. Like, they they showed it. They're like, hey, this was coming. It it was, like, the most unfinished game I think I've ever gotten the displeasure of fucking getting. Even, like, I got it, like, six months after. And it was I got so it as a, as a, I think, a birthday gift. And I'm pretty sure that was, like, the worst gift I've ever gotten. <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude, literally, like, it's it's honestly ridiculous, like, how unfinished that game actually was. Yeah. I mean, EA. Like, I feel like, like no, not, not that many. I feel like that is so casually blown <laughs> over that no one talks about. That game has quite possibly been the most unfinished game i think has been released and like that's saying a lot like i you know people might be like well what about this game like have you did you did you all play battlefield 5 because that game was unfinished more than a motherfucker going back to the uh the strikes if the strikes are headed for the gaming industry, I don't think we're gonna have to worry about anything this year. But I think future, like next year, is gonna that would definitely slow stuff down. Like I'm I pretty just, sure if you're excited for a game that's coming out this year, like Payday Three, Mortal Kombat One, Spider Man Two, all that stuff, I think, like I don't think any of the dates around that are gonna get moved around. I swear to God, it's Spider Man Two. Somebody gets pushed back. I fucking I will go. To where these strikes are happening, and I will shut blow them my down. Brain. I will I shut will, them down myself. I, no, I will <laughs> blow my brains out right in front of these motherfuckers, and they can use me as a martyr or whatever. You can't say fuck. that shit on YouTube. I don't give a fuck. Who's gonna report it? The three people that watch this. Hey, Dougie watches us. He he watches them from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah, that's because he's cute. But like, I, I he mean, is cute. We got we gotta have him on here. Yeah, but, like, I just don't, like, I, I don't care. I don't care, YouTube. Fucking, like, dude, they ban a... Did they, you see they, the, the viral tweet about the collector's edition of Spider-Man 2? No. It's like, oh, pre-ordered the collector's edition now for 19 inches of Venom. And everyone's like, man, I want 19 inches of Venom. Yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious. But, like, I just, like, I don't, I swear to God, do not push that game back. I, I will fucking, I... Bro, Arachnide I, is one of the pre-order skins. That's the only reason why I'm pre-ordering that game. I swear to God. I, I mean, well, it doesn't matter. All the pre-order skins become, like, unlockable in the game. Oh, do they? I mean, they, they did in the first ones. So they just have unlocked base, honestly. Arachnide is, is Moon Knight and, and Spider-Man together. So, like, I, I can't Well, get, I'm just I saying, gotta, like... I gotta get and, it. And, like, the, uh, in the first one they were. So, I mean, I can't imagine why in the second one they wouldn't be. That's fair. You get to play as Venom in Spider-Man 2? Have they announced that? Uh, I mean, you get Venom powers. I mean, like, do you actually get to play as, like, Venom Venom? Not just, like, symbiote suit Spider-Man? Well, I mean, probably. That'd be pretty cool. You know what? Detour real quick. I want to learn more about Insomniac's Wolverine game that they're working on. That got revealed, like, two years ago. (laughs) Bro, they haven't said a goddamn word about it. I know. I want. Maybe they're going to announce that or show more of that after Spider-Man 2 and its DLC and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's going to be, like, they're going to hint at it in that one. 
It's like they have not said a goddamn word. Which, I know. Like in a way, like it kind of concerns me because it's like, all right, what's what's happening? Insomniac has a pretty good track record. They just could, you know, have their nose down in the in the work and just, you know, make yeah, the but show it's, yet. it's like. It's like, come on. This I is... imagine when they showed the teaser, it was probably still in pre-production. It's probably yeah, in production like, here recently. Now it's I figured is done. Like they would at least sit like something, you know, like. Hey, we're like, still working on it or something, you know, a little check in. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Like, that's what I like at least value in games. Like, you know, like I'm not saying like you just have to like pump it out. Like, just like you say know, something. Say, I... hey, we're still working on it. Like, don't announce something that's not going to come out for 6 to 10 years. Oh, ESO and GTA 6? Like, I get it. Those companies have been harassed by people to say something about it. So, like, I get they have to say it. But it's not like they have to, like, entertain fans. Like, you know, they could, like, go dark for, like, three years and they'll be fine as a company. Like, they'll finally announce, like, oh, yeah. Elder Scrolls 6 coming out next year. They could go dark for three years and then say that. Did you see and where apparently the rumored release date for uh, GTA 6 is they're going to announce it in October of this year and it will come out for release in October of next year? Yeah, bullshit. We could be getting GTA 6 next year, so, you know. Bullshit. I know, I'm not putting much faith in that leak. Bullshit. If I can... Bro, uh, my, my kid, my it's kid. crazy to think that when GTA 5 came out, I was in high school. And yeah, we're still real. playing that shit. What, what the fuck? I, I was in fucking, like, fifth grade. You were in fifth grade when GTA 5 came uh, out? About. I was, like, either in oh fifth or sixth God. grade. Man, was, I'm old as shit. I think I was a freshman. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking crazy we're right. still people still playing gta online after all these years i don't know how because I mean, I mean, they actually add content to it on like fucking... that online oh my god that was atrocious what a choke <laughs> what a choke bro they could have done so you. much with that they could have done so that could have made them just as much money as our online or as GTA online.